Hi everybody, this video will discuss how to import audio clips into Unreal and how to use them in a variety of ways uh, to be able to build some ambient sounds uh, and some loopable repetitious sounds. Uh, I'll go ahead and hit play and show you uh, so you can listen to some of the different audio. Uh, so when I hit play, one thing that uh, is consistently happening on a loop is uh, some character breathing. Uh, so this heavy breathing that's going on. Uh, another thing that I have set up is when I start walking, uh, so any kind of movement will start footsteps. It's an alternating footstep. When I let go of my movement commands, the stepping will stop. Uh, also, you can probably hear it uh, in the background, but I have some ambient nature sounds, some uh, bug noises and uh, nature sounds that are playing on the loop in the background uh, as well as the last one is uh, the fire campfire sound uh, the crackling as we get closer to the campfire um, but as I move further away I don't hear that campfire noise as much anymore uh, I have balanced all the audio uh, somewhat in the project so far so that no, none of the audio is overpowering each other so some of the audio might be a little faint it's intended for that purpose so that most of the audio works well together so like the nature sounds the fire crackling sound is not very loud uh, as I create these and show you how to build these uh, I will turn them up so you can hear them a little higher so this is meant to be a horror game so it's a very dark dim lit uh, environment and uh, the audio should also uh, resemble or relate to that horror idea as well we don't want things to be too loud or too soft but we want a good balance between audio so I have some audio uh, already imported into Unreal uh, and I'll show you how to import them in as well so I have uh, my folder and I've just dumped my audio into my main Unreal folder uh, I have a birds in nature audio clip that I've not imported already so I'm going to import this one show you how to use this uh, I'm going to be using wave formats uh, so if you have another format mp3 or some other format you can always use a program like audacity or some other audio editing program to convert it to a wave format uh, but that's what we're going to use and that's what Unreal uh, supports so importing an audio clip we can do the same exact way uh, I've created another folder that's just called audio so all my audio clips are going to be imported into that subfolder. I'm going to drag the birds in nature wave into my audio folder. Uh, and then when I go click into Unreal, here's my audio clip. Uh, there's a quick preview so you can hit the play button in the content browser. And you should be able to hear the bird audio playing. All right, this is a long clip, a little over a minute and a half. Uh, you could cut it down before you import it. Uh, that's always the preferred method. Uh, but um, uh, I'm just going to let it loop so that it can be longer if it needs to be. It's not a big deal. So the black clips, uh, the black visuals, have a small little wave uh, showing that this is an audio sound wave. And the other nodes that are in here are called sound cues. So a lot of things that we can do in Unreal, we can just directly recall the uh, sound wave. But if you want to make adjustments or be able to change things in Unreal, we need to create an, a sound cue from this sound wave. Um, so if I right click on that sound cue or sound wave, the individual sound wave, I can go up to the top section that says create cue. And I'm just going to let it rename it birds in nature underscore Q you can rename it if you want to so this is an actual sound cue that gives me more opportunities to open up the sound cue editor and make adjustments to it change the pitch change the volume make it loopable add other nodes to it if I double click on the sound cue this is the sound cue editor and we have the sound file and then the output so within the sound cue editor if I double click the output um, you can hear the sound play again. Uh, in the details panel I have a bass volume so I can crank that up louder and it will be louder. I can also crank it lower 
It might be rather difficult to hear, but it's a lot softer of sound. 0 0.25, 0 0.75 is what it was default. Uh, so the sound cue editor also has specific nodes. You can hit spacebar to stop the playback. Uh, and I'm not going to roll through all of them. Uh, we There are different ways to set attenuation, which is how far away you are from the sound cue itself as it's in the level before it starts to deteriorate or you, you lose the hearing of that uh, sound cue. So we can add an attenuation node. We can change the attenuation over here on the left. I'm going to show you the most basic way, which is just to pull it into your level and then adjust it in the details panel after it's in the level. Um, but a good way if you are duplicating the sound cue in a lot of places is to change the attenuation here as well. Um, we can go over to the left and choose or type in override. Oh, maybe it's not going to come up. Let's see if we can go find it down here. Attenuation, override attenuation, uh, and make your adjustments here um, with the override settings. Wherever they're located. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to do it within the. You can also add an attenuation setting adjustment as well. I'm going to show you how to do it in the viewport as well. One thing we can do is add a modulator to our sound cue. Uh, so this setup is very similar to how Blueprints is. We're going to take the output from the sound file, drag it into modulator, and then drag the output from modulator into the output. Now, default is not going to do anything differently because we haven't made any adjustments. But if I click on the modulator, um, I can change my volume here. And what's nice is now I have a min and max. So I've got a little bit of variety here. I can crank this up to 2 and this to like 1.8 or whatnot. And it will be louder. But this is better if you want to lower it and have a um, not as drastic a sound file. So if we put this up to 2 and 2 there, double click on the audio output again, it'll be much louder now. Um, we'll put that back at 1 and 1, I kind of wanted to have an even, even audio uh, volume. We can also change the pitch here, so the pitch is nice. Uh, we can double the pitch, just do something crazy like 5 you know, for the min and maximum, and then double click the audio again. With a much higher pitch, it sounds faster. What might be a little eerier for a horror game is to lower it much more. 0 0.2, 0 0.2. There we go. So that sounds eerier, um, or more scarier. So modulator is a really nice uh, node to adjust pitch and volume. One other thing I'm going to add is. Uh, I want this to continuously loop in my world, so I want to add a looping node as well. So I'm going to just drag this in, hit spacebar to stop the audio. Click from the modulator output to looping, and then drag from the output from looping into output. Um, this, like I said, is a minute long video or audio clip, so I'm not going to wait for it to completely loop. I've also lowered the pitch, which means it's going to play slower. But I want it to, and need it to be looping if I want this to continuously play in the background. So modulator and looping are two simple nodes. There are other ones you can look at and play around with, but those are two basic ones. So I'm going to click save. Right, let's hit space bar to stop the audio. So now we're ready to actually drag in our uh, birds and nature sound into our world and then kind of play around with that a little more. Um, so if I drag my bird's nature audio cue or sound cue into the world, I'm going to drag the sound cue and not the WAV file. It'll create an icon, a game icon, looks like a speaker. So uh, as default, when you drag a sound cue into the world, it's going to play a consistent uh, volume and distance no matter where you're at. So it's an even audio sound cue. Uh, throughout the entire world. So if I go hit play, you can hear the low bird sound that's on now. I'm going to go in and temporarily turn off uh, my other sounds. So this is my blueprint 
uh, breathing, so I'm going to cut that off. And this is my footsteps. I'm going to cut that off uh, so that maybe we can hear that uh, compile. And then I have another sound cue right here, which is my, my other night na uh, nature sounds. Uh, I'm just going to delete that from the scene. I'll, show you. I'll pull that back in later. So now when I hit play, the only audio cue we should hear is the, the birds. So much lower pitch on the birds. So as default, it doesn't matter the position. It's going to be a consistent uh, audio cue throughout the whole world. So that's really good for ambient background noises or even music. If you want it to play throughout the entire game, no matter where the player is in the level. It'll loop uh, properly as it gets to the end of the clip. But what if you only want this audio cue to be heard when you are closer to it? Uh, so here's where attenuation comes into play. Um, so in the details panel over here with that audio cue selected, I'm going to scroll down until I see override attenuation underneath the attenuation section. And if I click override attenuation, if I zoom out some, you can see there are two circles or really wireframe spheres that you see. The inside one is the area where you'll hear the audio cue the loudest. Uh, the outer one is the outermost area the audio cue can be heard. And as you get closer and closer to the outer circle, uh, it will the audio cue will die off more and more. So you'll be able to hear it less and less. It's the size of my map right now, so it's pretty large. Uh, so after you turn on override attenuation, we're going to go to the down to the attenuation distance and play with the setting here. So I'm really going to leave the inner radius the same. But what I am going to do is lower the fall off distance, which is the distance for the outer circle. Let's put that to something like a thousand. Okay, we'll try that out. So basically I have to be within this zone if I want to hear this audio clip. Uh, so the audio cue itself has to be looping, otherwise this is not going to work, so that looping node needs to be in there. And then for the audio cue itself, we're going to go up, turn on override attenuation, and then increase or decrease the inner radius and fall off distance. So now let's hit play. And my player character is uh, pretty, pretty far away. Um, if I get closer, you can hear that audio kick in more is louder. But as I walk further away, I no longer hear that audio. Okay. With the looping turned on for the audio cue, if I go back in, the audio will start again. So there's my audio. Uh, it is important to understand that it will restart. It doesn't pause and pick back up where it left off. Uh, when you exit the attenuation radius, the fall off distance, and come back in, it's a restart command to the audio. So it'll replay the audio from the beginning. You can also hear the crackling of the campfire because I have an attenuation set on that as well. So those are two main ways we can incorporate audio. Uh, if you drag an audio cue without override attenuation, that plays audio throughout the whole world or level. If you turn on uh, override attenuation, then it'll only be heard when you're in the outer radius, and it'll be the loudest when you're inside the inner radius. So we can take that, you know, kind of one step further and create a blueprint. So look at my props menu. I have a blueprint here. And in this blueprint, I find my objects. I have some uh, tree branches. Uh, I have a fire particle. Uh, I have a point light, which will actually light the area. And then I have my campfire cue. Um, so let me kind of move this down a little bit, find my audio, and play my campfire cue. So I've also created an uh, sound sound cue for this as well where I have lowered the um, volume drastically from 0.75 to 0.15 so it's not as strong of a sound let's just crank that up to 0.5 so we can hear it more um, so I've created a blueprint and with this blueprint uh, I don't have to manually adjust things uh, in the blueprint I've also adjusted the attenuation 
So I already have a couple of fires in here. Let's just drag another one to another area. Uh, we'll just drag this over here. So you can see where my inner radius is and outer radius is for that as well. Uh, so now if I hit play, I can turn my flashlight on. When I get closer to that campfire, I can start to hear that campfire more. When I get further away, uh, I don't hear it as much anymore. So, uh, in a real world standpoint, you know, you're not going to hear fires roaring and whatnot, or even a crackling when you're further away. Um, but as you get closer to it, you'll be able to hear it more. So, I'll turn down the volume of it because it's more like a roaring fire with the default audio file. Uh, but if I change it back down to 0.15 with the volume, it actually blends a lot better and it's not, not overpowering anything else in the scene. All right, so that's some basics of creating, importing audio and creating uh, sound cues and then dragging them into the scene to be able to build interesting forms.